everyone, it's Kelsey. This is Essentially Bug. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. And it is almost July, so it's the perfect time to do the mid-year book freak out tag, which if you're not familiar with, this is a tag I've been doing since the beginning of my channel. I think this was actually the first video I put up in 2022, which I think is when I started my channel. I cannot remember. Um, but basically this is just a check-in mid-year of the books you've read your goals, where you're going, all of that. Just kind of a fun way to take account of your reading, which I'm trying to be mindful of my books this year, you know. Before I go into this, like I am about two and a half weeks into my new job and I'm loving it, but it's just, I'm back to practicing law versus being in a JD preferred role. By the time I get home at night, I'm fried right now. So my reading has definitely taken a dip and it's like, it's not that I don't want to read. I'm just so fried that like right now, the only thing I want to read is like romance. So I'm hoping my reading picks back up because I have so many books I want to read this year and I want to tackle so many books off my shelf you know so it's just different so it'll be interesting to kind of see where the next half of the year the next few months kind of lead me but I do love my new job it's a good way to get me back into practicing law it's in real estate which I love it's for a company that is really growing um, and it just, I'm in a good position where I'm at. So I'm just kind of very excited to continue to grow and learn. I feel like I am going from zero to a hundred and that I'm having to relearn like a whole body of law I haven't done in a long time. And so I'm going from torts to real estate, which is totally different, but it's been fun. So let's get started with the mid-year book freak out tag. And all right. So the very first question is the best book you've read so far this year. And that is very easy for me because it is Table for Two by Amor Tolls. He's just one of my auto by authors. I love, love, love how he writes. I've also read Rules of Civility by him this year, and I would say they're both up there, but I gave this five stars. I gave Rules of Civility four. Uh, this is a collection of short stories, and then the end is a novella that ties back to Rules of Civility. He is so good at writing about like the banality of human existence, as well as just humanity's quirks. Our flaws he just brings them out but in a humorous light I think and it's very real I laugh out loud with his writing but I also just think sometimes he's just so spot on in capturing the human condition I'm not a huge short story reader either so this was just fun but there's one short story about a man who is an alcoholic that I have not stopped thinking about it was so funny and clever and then just every story was like it would make me want to laugh and cry like there were just so many the juxtaposition between his characters like he's just such a good writer so this was easiest best book of the year so far and we're actually reading it for my in real life book club like this month for another one so i'm kind of excited to talk about it with other people all right and then the next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year i brought up iron flame thinking this was going to be that i read it this year but i actually read it last year so ignore that and that wasn't the best sequel that would have been best disappointment if oh no I just my, that would have been biggest disappointment if i'd read it this year so best sequel you've read so far would be kingdom of ash and like the whole throne of glass series every single one of them just blew me away it was such a fun reading experience i think this is her best work like 100 percent the depth of the characters like the epic nature and scope i think this is sarah j moss's best work i still need to i'm still doing my reread if you've been kind of following along so i still need to read a court of silver flames and then i need to reread Crescent City before I read the new one. So I still haven't read the newest Crescent City. I think actually next month because of where my brain is, I think rereading would be good for me. So I'm going to do that. I think it's just kind of a way to get back out of my book slump, but hands down Kingdom of Ash. And then the new releases you haven't read yet, but want to. So I've got a stack here. Um, my local indie, I subscribe to their book subscription. And so they have really done a great job actually. Yes. One second. I have one more book I want to add to this. Okay, so I subscribed to my local Indies book subscription and they are so good at picking books, especially new releases. So three of them came from my Indie, but then I also got one of them as a book of the month. So I sold the Indie one because it was signed by the author and then kept the book of the month one. So first new release is Margot's Got Money Troubles. I've heard that this is just like hilarious, spot on for our generation. Um, she's a hot mess. I love that. And then The Husbands I keep seeing a ton about by Holly. Gramazio. Um, it's blurred like Claire Lombardo and Gabrielle Zevin. This is about a woman who isn't married, comes home. There's a guy in her house who claims to be her husband. She sends him up to the attic and when he comes down, a new husband comes out. And then also from them was The Ministry of Time. I've heard so much about this book, so one I'm very excited for. And then the two other ones, um, 
Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I read Riley Sager every summer. And I've heard this is a good one. Um, and then finally, Same As It Ever Was by Claire Lombardo. She's just, I love her. She works at an indie bookstore here in Iowa. She's from the Iowa Writers Workshop. And she's been interviewed on the Dog Your Books podcast. I just love her as an author, but I love how she writes about humanity. Um, the banality, I've used that word twice in this video. <laughs> how just kind of the ordinary parts of life. This one is with a mother who had postpartum depression back in the day. Her college and teen-aged children throw her for a loop and then there's some like references to her past where something happened that nearly derailed her marriage just all these things and it's I don't know I love how she writes so much so those are all the new releases I haven't read yet but want to all right and then the next one is your biggest disappointment so I have two I would say I cheerfully refuse by Leaf Anger is one of them Everything about this book had five-star prediction vibes. It's set on Lake Superior. It's about, has like a reticent Lake Superior uh, about grief. And it's Leif Anger who wrote Peace Like a River, which is one of the best books ever. And I was bored. Um, it was kind of like an Odyssey-esque journey in this book, but I thought it would have, the story went in a direction that was not blurbed. And I don't know, it just, it didn't work for me. I was very bored. And then the other biggest disappointment I had was The Fury by Alex Michalides. I love The Silent Patient. I haven't read The Maidens, but this one was just like predictable, boring. He's a great writer and the structure of it was really cool because it was kind of set up like a, a Greek tragedy, but it just was boring and dumb and far-fetched and I could not suspend disbelief. I hated every character. Like it just didn't do it for me. And then my biggest surprise this year was, I have so many books around me, I can't find them. Um, what the River Knows by Isabella Banez. This is historical fantasy, but very light on the fantasy. So if you're not a huge fantasy reader, but you like historical fiction and romance, I think you might like this. Um, Cause it's more, if you like the mummy, it's got like that kind of a vibe, like archeology span type magic, but very minimal. And basically this girl lives half of the year with her aunt until her parents come home. Her parents are like archeologists and they unexpectedly die. And she's in Brazil. And then her parents are over in Cairo and in Egypt. And so she decides to just sail out there and figure out what happened. And then she gets like pulled into this weave of like colonialism in the sense of like the British are trying to colonize Egypt and take artifacts that aren't theirs. And then people who are trying to do what's best for the Egyptians, there's magical objects, but again, very like magical realism, not super fantasy. So. I really like this. I cannot wait for the sequel. Like it's, I think the next question, oh, nope. Anyways, but cannot wait for the sequel for this. Okay, the next question is newest favorite author. And this one's kind of hard. Like I don't feel super strongly about this one, but I would say that I've read two books by this author this year and it's Elena Armas. She's a romance reader, romance writer. Um, and she wrote The Fiance Dilemma and The Long Game. The Fiance Dilemma comes out in July and I really enjoyed reading it. I would definitely pick up anything by her because I think she writes like found, she writes good communities around her romance authors. She's funny, there's really good banter, but the main character in this book, like the main male character, he was just perfect in every way and it just really worked for me. Yeah, I don't really feel strongly about like new favorite author. I've reread a lot of authors this year that I enjoy. It's kind of a lame answer, but that's where I'm at. A book that made you cry? I don't know if I've read one that made me cry this year. I'm reading one currently, which is, um, it's Kate Bowler's book and I can't think of it. So I didn't really have any books that have made me cry this year. I'm not a big crier in books. Like they don't make me get that emotional. So I can't really answer that. <laughs> Okay. And then um, book that made you happy. Gosh, there were a lot, I would say. The Undermining of Twyla and Frank. I love Megan Bannon. I, that comes out in July as well. And I've really loved that. The Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love. It's Dramony fan fiction. And that was really fun. It made me smile a lot. Um, Bride by Ali Hazelwood. It Happened One Fight. The Long Game. Uh, yeah, I've had pretty fun books. The most beautiful book you've bought or received this year and that is Emily Wilde and Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I've listened to this on audio and just loved it and cannot wait to read the next book. This was like not what I expected. I thought it would be, it is cozy fantasy, but 
there was just like a lot more magic in it than I thought there would be. I don't know what I was expecting. I really like this. I actually would want to reread it, but I had a lot of fun with that. And then the books you really need to read by the end of the year. <laughs> uh, let's just turn you here. All those. That's my TBR cart. Okay, so that's my TBR cart. My 24 and 24 are on there, some new releases, some books I've said I was gonna read and then didn't. Uh, there's a lot in there. I should probably check in with my reading goals. Um, actually, I know that's another, some of the other questions for the mid-year book freak out. I grabbed a different version this year, I guess, but my reading goal right now on Goodreads is 120. I'm at 58, I'm actually kind of behind schedule. But that's okay and then as far as goals let's check in I do want to see how far I've done how I've done with my 24 and 24 because I know I'm behind but I have like made more progress than I was expecting to at this point of the year I'm also doing pop sugar I need to check in on that and then I also need to check in on my our fantasy so let's see here once upon a time I made a pretty pretty graphic and then once upon a time I probably deleted it okay I have this graphic up I I'm a little behind. So I have 24 books. I've read one, four of 24. <laughs> but I will definitely be getting more on this. I need to check out a couple books from the library if I'm being super honest with myself. But I did knock out probably the biggest one, which is Stephen King's 112263, Uprooted, Going Zero, I read in June, and then Black Cake, I've read. So that's four. I know it's behind. I'm reading Ninth House slowly right now. Yeah, so I definitely need to get on that. But I'll take that. So still have a lot to do. I'm behind on all my goals. That's fine. It's been a year of like upheaval. So that's cool too. But I'm excited. I'm doing well. I'll keep it up. <laughs> but that's my mid-year book check-in. I am loving watching other people's mid-year book freak out. And until the next video, everybody. Bye.